Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> all right. We, we did that as kids all the time, trying to pull that off. <laughs> well, the, the timing and everything is so perfect with them. So perfect. So perfect. Okay. So Freeform Friday, I want to get a little bit of housekeeping talk just for a quick second. Then we'll bring in the barns as it goes. And first up, I did want to tell everybody because there was some confusion. I uploaded the Alec Baldwin police interview. What? Right, and I'm labeling any interview that we're not doing this just raw footage as raw so everybody understands this is the raw footage i got a lot of requests saying where can we watch the full interview etc so mark and i will be reacting to the different content but we are also or i will be also uploading the uncut versions of the original interview so people can peruse them on their own get familiar with them and it might help in the chat if they you know come up with concepts or ideas or commentary I already have Seth Kinney ready to roll, and that'll probably be up this weekend. I may get a couple Hannahs up as well this weekend. And we have the material. Why not put it out there for everybody to check out and, and spend their time? Little Birdie tells me that the FBI has uh, results and are going to be returning them very soon. Hmm. So I look forward to that. Second thing. We like to say, hey, why haven't you subscribed? Why haven't you hit that red button at the end? And we keep hearing, hey, knucklehead, why don't you ask at the beginning? So Who said that? Many, many, many people, <laughs> including the chat. So this is the knucklehead, and I'm asking you. You know, you could a put red a word down there. It says subscribe. You could put the word on the screen. I, I see that a lot on other shows. I, I guess I could. I could right. do that. Um, is that difficult or? I, I don't know. It could, it could be. A I see. I'm, I don't know. You know this stuff better. Than I mean, me. oh, like look, that. there, that's great. That's great. There you go. <laughs> okay. Like okay. So maybe at a random point during the show that might just appear. But oh, I see where you're going with this. I see what you're going. <laughs> I get you. You're yeah, it's, it's going to be a subtle, subtle. Whoa, little... whoa, alert! Uh, well, alert. Well, what, what happened? What happened? If you had a siren, Hundley, that might help too. Like a whoop, whoop, whoop. Well, well, you know what I really need to have is um, in the middle of the closing testimony for the defense. Right. For Amber Heard, an Amber Alert to go off in the courtroom. I see what you're saying. Amber Alert. I get that. But wow. it happened. It happened. What? An Amber Alert went off in the oh, middle no. of the closing testimony for Amber Heard. Somebody was kidnapped? or what I have it? no idea. But the beauty right. of it is that Amber Alerts, you can't silence them. Right. They don't allow the phone manufacturer. So if you have your phone silenced or anything else, it doesn't matter. So you had an echoing Amber Alert throughout the courtroom right. on her closing. That's funny. I got mine set to Biden Alert. Anytime he says anything anywhere in the world, it goes off. <laughs> okay. Well, now I've I've said my piece. And piece. I'm That's probably... <laughs> So let's bring in the brains here. Hey, Brainiac, what's up? <laughs> hey, How goes it? How's it going, bro? Well, it's good. good. It's all around now. <laughs> well, because I'm just going to be <laughs> watching. Oh, I don't even know how alone. this goes. All right. So when we're, okay, we're on courts or trials and things like that. And Barnes, you came up with a suggestion earlier about the craziest trials out there. And well, I guess we talked about one with Abby Hoffman. Oh, right. and that was a good one. Yeah. That I, I'm sure that you have I some that you can that share, one. Barnes. That was great. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was just thinking that, you know, so in light of the Depp Heard trial and how crazy it's been, then we could always start off with some law tube drama. If you want to, uh, uh, given that you're the you're, you're, you're the law tube generator, you're really the, 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 the law father of the law tube uh, environment. <laughs> the you know, non lawyer. Created. You're the non-lawyer in the group. I could talk about it. I don't know if it's Inside Baseball. I was going to do another uh, video about it because, well. We throw some people under the bus. Think about who, who you don't like and just toss them right in there. Oh, look at this. Look at this. This is called instigation. Wow. Um, let's just say that the law, I think law two may be at, in the good old days. I, I, I see the whole concept is starting to really shred. Well, that that's because Nick Ricada thinks that uh, if he recants the king, uh, the throne recants the papacy that he can get rid of the papacy. And uh, I'm not sure that's correct. I, I think we can just replace him with a new Pope. He's now an outlaw. He's an outcast. <laughs> he was born an outlaw outcast anyway. He so who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? 
Uh, well, I've taken the Pope label. Taylor. Okay. I was thinking about nominating uh, Viva. Well, remember, uh, which movie is it, Mark, The uh, where Clint Eastwood is a High Plains drifter? He has the dwarf get up, and the dwarf, he makes the dwarf the mayor, the sheriff. Oh, and the right. King. Yeah. Yeah, he goes, yeah. I'm yeah. the mayor. I'm the sheriff. I'm right. the, or maybe it's just mayor and sheriff. It's great. I mean, it's mocking the political institutions, is the idea. It's a little fellow, I guess, is the politically correct terminology. Eric, no, uh, turn Barnes person. up a little bit yeah. volume wise. We got Barnes well, I, up. he was up and blasting. How is the right. volume on everybody to the chat who I care we about? I don't really care about Mark very much, but right. the chat I do care about. Am I too loud or not loud enough? No, I, I put you on um, on a balance. Okay. Perfect. So Perfect. you, you yeah, should be. Fine. That's fine. So now's good. I yeah, think it's yeah. still a little low, but that could be me. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Turn up your your volume a little more. A little bit. Yeah. Either way is good. Okay. You're low. Okay. okay. It's survivable. Look. It's doable. Usually yeah, I can go like like that. It's doable. But, uh, oh, that's the, actually uh, perfect. What is I got to figure out all this technology? So there's some way to flip this mic around and go the other way. But like I, I have it. Other people set this up. I have no idea how to do it. Right. Either. And whenever no, I screw around loosen this the stuff, screw and turn it, it, anyway. Yeah, I, I know. Theor <laughs> theoretically, uh, you know, I, I've lost like eight phones and six laptops and five tablets, and that's just no bueno. But uh, I, I mean, loosely for those out there, I mean, I, I don't care too much. There is an interesting aspect to it. Mm -hmm. What happens when the it, it, it's uh, when is the, the the when when someone knows they're being observed? It changes the di the dynamic of society and culture. It's been sort of a constant psychological and uh, study subject of study well it, it's yeah there, there there's an a weird um the trial the johnny depp trial uh, i will be honest i didn't think it was going to have the traction it did not you know i was thinking i don't know if it's going to be quite like written house written house was you know a really oh, important social moment oh yeah. no it, it is but i yeah. i didn't yeah. know that i thought it would maybe played out but it's no johnny it didn't depp. it's johnny depp plus soap operas you got a and, soap opera drama. You got Johnny Depp. So, like Michael Jackson, OJ, of course, was bigger. Uh, Michael mm. Jackson would have been bigger, but they didn't allow cameras inside the courtroom. Mm. And that's why you got you know the drawings. Uh, Snipes would have been pretty big. Wouldn't have been up to Sni uh, up to OJ, but it would have been pretty big. Right. But again, no cameras allowed in the courtroom. What about right. Marilyn yeah. Manson? That's the one I'm I'm really interested in because again, I think Johnny Depp is big too because of counter narrative. We are yeah. saying that the male Me is too. the victim. In the accusation, and so that's the a other lot thing. of fans. I mean, where is he? What top five all time? Uh, male oh, yeah, and I think it might be number one in just box office that's totality I mean, box because office the, he's way up there. The yeah. sheer number of films he's done. I, I mean, he's done a lot of indies that didn't make any money, but the tentpole ones really put him up there uh, with Cruise. I think it's him and Cruise, and but he's done more tentpole films than uh, Tom Cruise. But the indies have helped his reputation, so he's the got both like the critical. Yeah. He's got yeah. the critical acclamation of being known as a really talented actor as well as a guy who can bring box office, which is, well, I found it fascinating. Rare. The discussion with Warner brothers about the sequel to Aquaman and nobody really got into it. Um, but what I heard, heard Amber heard what I heard from the discussion, uh, I was dipping in and out, but the Warner brothers thing fascinated me because what they were trying to point out is there's no contractual obligation to the sequel, Robert, mm. And she pointed out five Batmans, despite the success of Batmans, right? right? So you have Amber Heard as the love interest, and something has happened since she was the original love interest. And that's why Warner Brothers is concerned. It's not about the scandal with Depp. It has well, nothing I, to do with that. Speaking of Batman, Katie Holmes didn't appear in the second Batman. She was a love interest. She was replaced oh, no, by another actress. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and there's no guarantee that... that even without the depth thing that Heard would continue with the Aquaman uh, franchise. No, because Momoa can't stand her. If you listen well, to the it, other Warner Brothers more guy. There's to it than that. And who, they, who use runs the that. Word, they use the word chemistry, chemistry. repeatedly. Yes. And her public, her public persona as a lesbian has eliminated her from the Aquaman franchise. And that's the dirty unspoken word here used as mm. chemistry. Because the fact of the matter is the American public and and. Keep in mind, Hollywood's the most liberal place on the earth. It has nothing to do with uh, homophobia or anything else. But once it's revealed to the American public that you are indeed publicly a lesbian, your career as a romance star in a big tent mo pole movie is finished. You now have to do indie films. And yeah, that, you, uh, could that look, makes sense. you could look, what's that? That makes sense because it would not only piss off middle America, it'll piss off China. No, it's not a question of pissing off. It's a question of suspension of disbelief. 
They cannot imagine. And this is not a knock. It has nothing to do with homophobia. It has nothing to do with bigotry at all. It's a question of suspension of disbelief. That's why Rock Hudson was in the closet for all those movies with Doris Day. It had nothing to do with homophobia. It's about going into a theater, seeing a man kissing a woman, and believing, believing that they are heterosexually in love. Once you're publicly outed as gay or lesbian, that myth, that persona, that fantasy cannot be sold with all the billboards and TV commercials and trailers in the world. Hey, speaking of love, I have some love for Lisa Mitchell. Thank you. Oh, so I much. love this girl. Thank you, Lisa. Holy oh. cow. Yeah. I love these people. <laughs> definitely, definitely some love there. But um, yeah, I, I didn't know if that the China box office. As no, no, well no. It's not even that. I mean, you, you look at Michelle Rodriguez, you look at Kristen Stewart, Ellen Page, Jodie Foster, all the same story. This um, uh, storyline that he tried to destroy her career has nothing to do with it at all. I'm sure he attempted to get her removed from Aquaman the same as he got her the job on Aquaman because they mm -hmm. had the same agent. What Johnny does, Johnny could take away. But that's not the concern of Warner Brothers. Warner Brothers mm -hmm. doesn't want her in the future sequels because she is now publicly married or in a lesbian relationship or whatever the situation is. And whether Momoa wants her or not is a sidebar issue. Warner Brothers can't sell a romantic situation with a lesbian. And Boy, Momoa at, didn't want her too. So that I mean that was a factor as well. I mean the, the guy in Momoa didn't of, have the power to pull that string. He you know he no. does now, but he didn't then. He didn't. No, it's, then. He definitely didn't then. Right. Right. Uh, the, uh, oh sure. Yeah. I mean no that, that's true. That's because what was it? Uh, what's her name? Who used to be married or dated? I think, you know, Harrison Ford, but then end up with Ellen DeGeneres. Her career disappeared. That's she... right. They, they have to disappear. And it's not bigotry. It's not. Right. It's marketing. Well, believe me, they have tons of friends in Hollywood. They have tons of lesbian and straight sure. friends. This is the most liberal, uber crazy place on the earth. It's about selling a fantasy to the American public. Jodie Foster is not going to be in a romantic film anytime soon. What they no. will move to is the Woman in Danger film, The Panic Room with Jodie Foster, where you're with your kid, you're the single mom. That's where Amber Heard's future is going. And or a character whole, actor like Kevin Spacey, who will play just an oddball well, that, but character. Again, that's why Kevin Spacey stayed in the closet as long as he did, was because of his career. And it mm -hmm. worked. The second he was outed with lawsuits, that was the end of Kevin Spacey. He can no longer tenable. And just to explain this, there's no scripts floating around Hollywood where the lead is a, is a lesbian. Those scripts are not floating around for big mm. studio pictures. What's floating around is a, a guy who is a superhero with a love interest. Now, they go from one person to the next, just so the people at home understand the system. They go from one actor to the next, the next based on availability, box office, the Q ratio, rating that the guy pointed out in the trial and they move down the line. There is no way that this woman is gonna be considered for any of these in the future. She's done, she's done. She's yeah. aged out too. So well, that's, that's, that's the separate She's 36, yeah. you know, that's on the-, on the Women, cost. yeah, it's tough still for women to get over. Right, no doubt about it, no doubt. I mean, Ellen Barkin looked pretty embittered when she, when well, she, well, she testified. She was still pissed, 30 years later, she's right. pissed about Johnny. Treating like it's, it wasn't a romantic relationship; it was a sexual relationship. Right, absolutely. Like, I haven't That's seen somebody say, "Oh, I wasn't." Uh, I haven't seen a woman under oath say, "No, no, no, it wasn't a romantic relationship. I was just a hoe." Uh, you know, but that's basically what Ellen Barkin testified to. Mark Ooh. knows Ellen Barkin, by the way. Well, we can't get into that, but I, I mean, the reality oh, we can't. Is, <laughs> this is one of the most sexy women alive when she oh, did Sea no, of Love with Al Pacino. Fantastic actress. I worked at Lampoon with her brother George. Uh, so there is some relationship there. But the reality of it is she, the window of availability for a, a, a leading actress in the studio <laughs> system is about five years, Robert. Five yep. years, and they cram in as many big pictures as they can get in that five-year period. And they're all gone now. You could, could say, you could do you a documentary, Ryan. what happened to Deborah Winger? I mean, you could go down the list of where everybody's gone. Their window is very short. They're I think there's a couple it. outliers like Nicole Kidman has managed to hang in there. Meryl Long, Streep. But Meryl Streep is the exception. And right. Right. Not as young, hot leads. Right. Absolutely. Helen no. I'm Mirren. talking about the young, hot yeah. lead window. Right. There's the actress window. That's not who Amber Heard is. Amber Heard is yeah. not Meryl Streep. Right. This is a different type of actress. 
Oh, but Brian, Depp, so you got a Depp is press. Brando. Depp is Brando. Well, yeah. you know who I? Yeah, Depp is Brando. You're right. The, right. Uh, uh, you know. By the way, I watched uh, Val Kilmer's documentary. It was actually pretty good. Have you seen it? Oh, I think I recommended it to you. Oh, okay. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I was impressed. Absolutely a great documentary. Absolutely. I, I used to run into him in Malibu. Now he's another guy I think would have been better off without the plastic surgery, but you know that that that's its own thing. The well, I mean, he would have been a great Mark Twain. I mean, it's too bad that the he was a great Mark hit. Twain on the stage. I mean, he did. Yeah. That's in the documentary, Robert. Right? It is. That would have been a good film. That would have been a because I, I realized there isn't really a great by, and he really captured that that character brilliantly. Right. There's you should Captain see what he, he he sent to me the when he was up for the part of LBJ in the mm -hmm. Rob Reiner uh, version of LBJ, which was the Hallmark Hall of Fame LBJ, which ended up being Woody Harrelson. But he wanted this role in the worst way, Val Kilmer. And he brought in Hollywood makeup people. And I'll send you a photo of, of him as LBJ later on. You will flip out how he looks like LBJ with, you know, some plastic you know, prosthesis and makeup, but he wanted that part badly. Well, when, when he wanted something, that's what the, the film revealed, how much he's a true artist. That, right. That, that, that's, and that he was driven by it. I mean, I always thought that was best captured with him. He played Jim Morrison. I mean, he captured Jim Morrison. He nailed well, Jim he, Morrison. Oliver told me the story where he got in the car with him and he popped in a cassette uh, recording of The Doors. And oh yeah, there it is. There's that's wow. Val Kilmer as LBJ. He would have been a great LB. He would have been a better LBJ. He was my else. LBJ for I. I always wanted to use Val. Until Here, he here's a. That's LBJ. That's LBJ up above and look yep. below. And what I really like is look at his hands. It, yeah, even yeah. the hands. That the that detail I think is so significant to get that. Yep. That oh, he would have been great. Val would have killed it. Val would. Yep. I mean, Woody's okay, but it's it's like he doesn't really capture. You know, the real, I mean, he's a much better actor, Val Kilmer. The, oh, uh, yes. And, yeah, and, a, he got into the car with uh, with Oliver and he puts this cassette into the into the um, uh, cassette player. And he says, guess which one of these uh, covers are me or Jim Morrison? And there's about six songs on there and he plays them as Oliver is driving down Sunset. And he says, this one's you, obviously. That one's, you know, Morrison. This is the original one with Morrison. And then the tape ends, and Kilmer says they're all they're me. all him. Yeah, and that's how he, that's how he got the part. <laughs> that, that is smart. I mean, yeah, that that was fat. But yeah, that was really well done as a documentary. Uh, I used to run into him in Malibu uh, at the. Uh, he used to go to uh, what not Jeffrey's, but that middle one uh, diner that's like a real breakfast place that's inside the the mall place. What's the heck? Starts with it. Oh, 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 not moon shadows, not the not uh, yeah, not moon shadows up from there. It's near the oh, by crossroad uh, uh, by uh, the crossroads yeah, in, the, in, the, yeah. in the strip mall. Yes, yeah, 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 I know what you're talking about. I was just over there the other night, oh, I just drove through I, there. I wonder if it's still there. That it's still the same name, it used to be a great little brunch, brunch place, yeah. Uh, so but he, he and several people would go there all the time. Well, the, it's funny uh, you're but, talking about Malibu and, and California. I just wanted to take an opportunity while you're here to explain how our election fraud works. So this is for the viewers at home. And oh, thanks! I just just undid the uh, the yellow. We're already demonetized. So you're going to say this word. So why don't we shape the language a little bit here? Oh, oh yeah, I don't know how. Is there another it's phrase for it? Or, it's um, not uh, election fortification. It's election okay. whatever fornication. It is, whatever it is, I just want to explain physically to the viewers at home. I don't know about this two thousand mules, whatever's going on, but here's how it physically works. I'm going to explain two parts of it so people at home can understand this. You get your you get your mail in ballot in the mail, right? So in Hollywood and in apartment complexes, there's about 20 or 30 apartments. So 20 or 30 of these, because they don't fit in the mailbox, Robert, are in the hallway. So the Russians or the Armenians or the Ukrainians, whoever the hell does it, has these kids who are runners. And they run around Hollywood and they pick up all the random envelopes that are laying in the hallway. And they put them in the car and they drive them out to a safe house in San Bernardino. In the safe house in San Bernardino, or it could be, you know, some other town, in the safe house, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of absentee ballots. Now they accumulate them into this central safe house. They count them up. They have, let's say, 20,000 of these in the house, 50,000 in multiple safe houses. They then offer this for sale. They don't have a political dog in the hunt, Robert. The Armenians and the Ukrainians and the Russian mob do not care who is going to be on the city council or, or the secretary of state of California. 
what they're selling is X amount of absentee ballots for X amount of dollars to whoever wants to pay. That's the absentee ballot market. Now, let me get into the, the dead list market that Becerra, when he was attorney general, did not want to clean up, even though Project Veritas, uh, or excuse me, the other guy. Um, Judicial Watch. Judicial Watch went to court and was victorious. The dead lists are sold all through California of dead voters. And you can buy 20,000 dead voters, 10,000 dead voters, 5,000 dead voters, whatever you need. You buy them before the election. So you can pull them out in an LBJ style when you need 5,000 or you may not need them. You may not need them. You may need 1,000, right? So you pull out your dead voter list at the end, like a trump card. And I don't want to use that word, but it is. And you throw it down at the last minute or the day after or the day after, whenever the final tally is, you trump the guy. Now, the other guy's got dead list too, Robert, but you don't know how many he's got. He may have paid for 20,000 dead voters, and that might be $150,000 or $250,000, which he may or may not have before the election. So you now are sitting on, let's say you're sitting on 30,000 dead voters, right? This is why Becerra did not want to clean up the dead voter list in the state of California. This is our currency here. This is how you beat your own Democratic opponent. This is, has nothing to do with Republicans, nothing bipartisan. This is all internal, one-party state. I'm sitting on 30,000 dead voters that I may not even have to use. That's the dead voter roll uh, list. The new thing with the mail-in ballots is rel relatively new, where you now get them mailed at home and they end up in a safe house in San Bernardino and they sell those oh, out to the- It's to dramatically the expanded the opportunities to yes, engage across. Yes, yes. Now uh, we know this because the police have arrested, pulled over cars filled with absentee ballots and these were brought to a safe house. My mail was stolen. I was contacted by the San Bernardino police saying, do you know a guy named- uh, Sergio Abramovich. And I said, no, I don't know Sergio Abramovich. And he says, well, your mail is out here in San Bernardino, right? And that's uh, unfurled a number of years ago for me. I began to look into this as to how this plot is played out in, in California. You know, you know what the right answer to that question was, Mark? Right. Uh, does he say he knows me? <laughs> oh, right, right, <laughs> right. That was pretty funny. But the sheriff then told me that my mail was in the in the house and they were calling each person whose mail they had found. So, yeah, does he know? Yeah, the, the, the our, 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 our Armenians are so influent. I, I found to be great young lawyers, Armenians, but the whole Armenian, there's so much of a kind of a quasi underworld status and figuring out who's who, Thank you know, you, who's Jay. really in something that's organized crime versus someone who's just attendant or associated to it versus someone's just got their business practice. I, I've had to deal with litigation with Armenians in L.A. It, it's brutal. I mean, that's how Garagos made his bones. Garagos may believe he was a Jew, by the way. If he said if they thought he was a Jew, he's a Jew lawyer. <laughs> if they found out he was Armenian, he was Armenian. No problem. Yeah. He, he didn't it was care. like Better Call Saul. You know, Better Call Saul, Saul Goodman, you know, it, which he means all, it's all Goodman, but he pretends to be Jewish because he gets more gets more clients. By, he gets more clients Jews. that way. Yeah, that's really true, by the way. That stereotype is out there. Right, and particularly so, within the uh, African American community, in my experience. Well, so that like, was oh, ridiculous of you to shorten your name from Barnstein to Barnes. I thought that was a blunder yeah, from the yeah, beginning exactly, of your exactly. career. You could have been worried. Got, after the Fuentes debate, there's, they've got me looking all Orthodox Jewish. Oh, the, right. Uh, okay. Right. Right. Well, I didn't know. I didn't know you were in Fiddler on the Roof in high school. That was a rare yeah, exactly, little thing exactly, left right. out of your bio. But you know, it is so what he, it well, is. Well, you know, most people don't know Viva's Jewish unless he publicly says it. You know the. Uh, uh, well, the fry height. Now, Abby Hoffman Jr. Yeah, they know now. Yeah, the fry height yeah, kind of gives now. it yeah, away. Yeah, with the fro, with the fro. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. Let me tell you something. You know, I, I don't think Goebbels would have a problem picking out uh, Viva from the lineup to get on the back of the truck. Let me just say that. <laughs> oh Jesus! Yeah, we're into Nazis now. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah, let me just tell you. By you're... the way, this is the audience for you. They're so observant. M Mark is slightly angled. He's a, right. it's the same background. It's just that. He's in front of the key to the city right now versus it being on the side. Oh, yeah, that's but because they, they of Bob's attention. birthday. I just wanted to highlight that Bob <laughs> just had his, his birthday yesterday. Oh, and I, That was oh, another I, good documentary. That's another guy I almost ran. You know, that was the problem. I was teaching my uh, uh, son to uh, stepson to drive in Malibu. Right. I, the problem is you, there's nobody you can run over that won't cost you a lot of money. He that's almost ran over true. Emilio Estevez. Uh, uh, Bob Dylan lived right down the street. Point but doing, speaking yeah. of good documentaries, that No Direction Home by Scorsese on Dylan was good. 
It's okay. It's it's okay. It's ah. good. It's not great. It's not great. But what do you it think is. Its limitations are. I mean, it's good are, for like. There are 19, limitations 19, to it. They they don't get into a lot of the 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 stuff that we know about Bob's uh, wine period, for instance, and Bob's heroin period, and Bob's uh, born again Jesus period when he joined the Vine. So that's Land. legit, right? And those I, I listened to a lot of songs, and people told me, but I wasn't sure he was that. He actually became a born again Christian. Oh, absolutely, Christian. absolutely. He was hooked up with the Vineland Church down in Orange County, and he yeah. was just sitting in there, just strumming his guitar, playing Jesus songs, and oh, absolutely true. He joined the church. It was like. Um, it's not a cult. It's just it still exists. Called Vineland. It's, yeah, I know all about it. It it, it right. has cultish quality. Yes, yes, yes. But then he becomes. There was a, a big one in Malibu. Yes, that's where he found it. That's where he, that's where he stumbled into it. That's why Bob got into it. But then Bob comes back to Judaism. He takes his kids to the Wailing Wall in in, in Jerusalem. Has him bar mitzvah. Reinvigorates himself. He writes Neighborhood Bully about the defense of the state of Israel. Uh, he he becomes he comes full circle. He goes full circle in, in uh, religion. Got a question yeah, they, about a potential future project, Mark, from Ziggy. What does it say? Question what for Mark Robert. And who would you cast? If you had you no make any movie and budget is no issue, what movie would you make? A new... Well, well I, I think the Oswald thing is yeah, what was my most recent thing, because that was 10 hours of um, uh, Oswald miniseries, and it was expensive. And we, you know, we did talk to uh netflix extensively about it but it was, it was ex expensive even for netflix but you know he was into it and you know it, it's it's hard because it's not a studio it's tv you know what i mean it's streaming so it was too expensive i think hunley would make a good assassin i think hunley could be one of the assassins hunley, i think you got something there the napping yeah. assassin uh, right. I'll, I'll play one of the mobster roles <laughs> Oh well, yeah! It's a funny oh, thing you mentioned that. Somebody was saying you were wearing Peaky Blinders. Set yeah, exactly. Up. <laughs> I was trying to point out to someone how Wikipedia is run by the CIA and how they have a room at Langley just of CIA people dealing with Wikipedia for all these people who are the laziest researchers in America. Wikipedia has now become the new couch potato for anybody who wants to challenge anything. I think we were doing a thing on Albert Sabin last week, and some knucklehead said. You know, I went to Wikipedia and none of the stuff you were talking about was on there. And I'm going, dear God, if I had to use Wikipedia as a source, I'd be out of business in no time. They had a debate on on Oswald's rifle on Wikipedia. And a lot of us were chiming in saying that the rifle in the Smithsonian is not Oswald's, which it's not. It's a different it's a different uh, man like a Carcano. It's not his. It's the length is wrong. There's a lot of different things. So it kept going back and forth between people flipping it, the argument on Wikipedia. And this went on for weeks. And finally, they locked it. And the, the one that locked it was the final one, which says this is the rifle in the Smithsonian. And I looked down, and they have on Wikipedia the longitude and latitude of the last person to edit the Wikipedia page. Mm. So I looked up the longitude and latitude, and it went right to Langley. And I said, <laughs> there it is. There it is, of course. They had the final word on the rifle. That is classic. Mm -hmm. Speaking of locking um, Wikipedia articles, we'll bring Viva back into it. The David Freiheit entry on Wikipedia, everybody can go to it and click the talk tab. There's a little talk tab toward the top, and you'll see how they're warring back and forth over mm -hmm. David, yeah. and, and there's a request on there. I want to lock this content because That's his right. people That's are right. trying to yep. get his right-wing crazy views yep. out. Well, there wasn't that debate with Wikipedia. It was just locked all of a sudden by the CIA, and that was the end. Right. They were the end of the discussion arbiters, and that's where it is right now. If you want to look up uh, Oswald's rifle, you'll see what I'm talking about. But I, I did want to bring up this thing. This friend of mine went to the Metropolitan Opera House last week in New York, and I thought this might be of interest because they were putting on a Puccini opera, Robert. And this was an opera that put, about Puccini, about the most beautiful woman in the world. That's the theme of the opera, right? And the opera had been closed for COVID and whatever. So they made everyone in the opera wear a mask. So everyone, not, not the performers, the people in the audience are wearing masks. And the opera starts and the, the finally the most beautiful woman in the world comes out. And it's a big fat Ukrainian dressed in a Ukrainian flag. Oh, God. Who had been replaced? They replaced the most beautiful woman in the world the week before for this Nuremberg rally of an opera in New York at the Metropolitan Opera House. And some of my friends were appalled by this and told me the details of what happened. And 
at some point in the opera, they stop and they show the audience and they're all waving in a standing ovation, tiny Ukrainian flags. I, just, I mean, you, you can't make this up. I mean, it's just, I said, telephone call for Lini Riefenstahl, Riefenstahl, telephone. You know, I mean, that's where this thing went, this crazy attempt that is now apparently unwinding a little bit, according to uh, you and these guys on the Duran, you know, and, and um, others. It, it's just insane. The, the, the levels to which we're seeing this mixture of reality TV and bad Hollywood script writing. Right. I mean, that's what, you know, the Johnny Depp, Amber Heard trial really was very poor screenwriting by her side of the aisle. Terrible. Very, you know, dubious makeup as well by her side of the aisle. Right. Um, and, you know, we'll see how it all unfolds. Um, but as celebrity cases go, I think the, it, well, one, the intriguing aspect of this trial is the, what happens when the gallery becomes part of the trial because they're now being observed too because the gallery is being broadcast on live TV. Like that didn't happen during the OJ case. It was just right. the courtroom that was videotaped. They didn't videotape the gallery. This is but back yeah, to I, the uh, not look at controversy. That. What'd you yeah, say? It walks right into the controversy of law too. Yes. Because what you have mm -hmm. is you have people demonstratively reacting and, but they're reacting in eye shot of the jury and they're rea and the question and the accusation is that they're reacting this way to get attention because they're being broadcast to the world. So hmm. they're like, oh, you know, you get that shock reaction. I, I don't think that's why they're doing what they're doing, but that's no, but no, that's they the get sucked argument. into it. They yeah, get sucked that's in. the argument. People are well, gonna why make. are they showing the gallery? Isn't there a way to put well, a because they're, they're, they're showing the lawyer the and you can look over their shoulder, right? No, okay. but I'm saying, isn't there a way to put a scram well, or? Yeah, it's because of the, the court has allowed. So the court sua sponte on its own decided to broadcast this. Right. So you have a right of public access, but uh, Heard did not want it broadcast. Depp's of team course. didn't object to it being broadcast, but it came up at the instigation of the judge. Oh, I weird. think the judge's pretext was there'll be less of a line to get into the courthouse <laughs> if we have it video broadcast. My own view is the court doesn't mind being the centerpiece of public attention. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, right. This is, you know, Ito. There was allegations of that concerning Ito going all the way back in the OJ case. Yeah. Now the, uh, but the the question be they uh, because they're so they had unusual. Usually, what happens? They only allow one or two cameras. Here, they appear to me to have allowed four or five. I, oh I, it, no, look, no, no! They allowed one. There's one camera company. There's one multiple camera cam company, but, I mean, but, but they're yeah, they're just pointing in the cameras, or at least yeah. they're allowed to turn around. Usually, and then they're not everybody allowed shares to turn the around. feed, right? This is a Hollywood well, production. This, they crew, do. this crew, whoever they are, this is like a veteran documentary crew. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, they had, did. I thought they had two video cameras in Rittenhouse. They definitely had cameras on the prosecution. They had cameras that, that I think it was a wider tables. angle, maybe. but Yeah, that would get part of the gallery. But like here, it seems like there's four or five almost. Because like they can get different angles on Amber Heard. Oh, they're different closing angles in, they're zooming Depp. in and out. I mean, they're... Yeah. Exactly. Well, remember, these are high def. So if they're using 8K cameras, they're probably using like red cameras. And you could just have the one set up the one shot and just zoom in and crop the shot and, right. and get a perfectly fine that must feed be. at a 720 because it's there. All the feeds are 720 or 1080 P. So you mm. figure at least a 4K camera, maybe even 8K mm. coming through. So because yeah, it's unusual. And so the question becomes, so what happened in the law tube universe is somebody that's part of this law tube group um, uh, was making, responding demonstratively during the trial. Mm -hmm. Apparently it went viral. That got Heard's PR team mad. They went into court. E. Barlow and of Heard's PR team dropped the shot of DUI guy yeah. who is uh, Larry somebody out of Cop? tennessee i think yeah or kentucky anyway kentucky. that's Kentucky. yeah D, dui guy in the shot and he's going uh, at the point where the um tmz guy burned elaine the lawyer with a line and by the way if you look at the shot everybody laughed including elaine johnny did ben chu like rolled back laughing because the guy burn her i mean it was a really good burn it was it was someone who what's interesting is it wasn't a real tmz witness because isn't he a former employee of tmz right he was well, the, no no but he, he was, was a, a dispatcher he was no, a he's a dispatcher manager. for no, it's more than the, the dispatcher. it's more than a dispatcher he he had worked his way up 
to be right. what's known at TMZ or at Daily Mail as a field manager. And oh, the field manager is the general in charge of paparazzi. He has an army that he commands. That cat was not a dispatcher. That guy knew the, the entire system and how to integrate it into a paparazzi dispersal for an event. And, and when he talked about the 15 minute thing, that's an unbelievable small amount of time to do what he was doing. But that's what they do, Robert. You know, they're able to dispatch an army in 15 minutes. You no, 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 no. The approval for the copyright. And that's because if the person who took the film signs it yeah, over, no, I, right, it I takes understand. no time yeah. at all. Right. I mean, you may end up having to negotiate with people, you know, for to buy something and that may mm -hmm. take weeks. But in this case, right, they were involved in the beginning. It was so well, yeah, obvious. Was and then the whole she's going to go out the building and turn her head. Yeah, that was a, it was a setup. Well, I'm curious. Why do you think he testified? Because he's okay. no longer working for TMZ. TMZ he, clearly didn't want him to testify. Right, she, right. She pissed right. him off. That, yeah, that was something, a personal something thing. happened there. But he, again, he's moved you, on. Uh, where he's in, people, you know, helping maybe, to facilitate that. I, I mean, you know what he, TMZ's reputation is. Uh, everybody yeah. works there. He's a gaming executive now. So he, this is a part of his career that he doesn't care about burning a bridge about because he's not going right. back to tabloid journalism, is my guess. He's right. now working in the gaming industry. Right. And, he, and probably building a bridge to Johnny Depp and to the fans watching it is mm -hmm. better for him. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What TMZ it. tried to stop was what he testified to, the actual system. That's why they tried to stop it. Oh, because the, the most okay. fascinating testimony was the machine, how it worked, Robert. That's mm -hmm. what he was explaining. That's why TMZ came in to stop him. Why do you think system. people never deposed or tried to get all of TMZ's records? Like if he hadn't voluntarily came forward, apparently they never deposed, they never subpoenaed. Because him. I think it was law to that pointed out the damn video when the copyright strikes were hitting. Because remember, mm -hmm. they showed that they were pulling from the court the actual video shown in court. And then right. TMZ was hitting all the law tuber videos, all the live streams, and they were doing a copyright thing. And law tuber saying, How the hell can you be doing a copyright strike on court video? And if you're doing it, then that means Amber Heard sold you the freaking video. Word got back to him. And he said, Yeah, we got but that why video. Not and as I think there's something that TMZ has that led Depp to not want to go directly opposite them. Well, it could. There's, there's a long library of stuff involving Depp and his drug use, which is probably true. But and there must it, be they must have stuff that they haven't disclosed yet. Uh, tons of it, Robert. So does the National Enquirer. I mean, so what? I mean, that's used later to, to negotiate. You could trade right. that up for other stories. I mean, people don't understand this this industry. It's a it's not the newspaper industry. It's a sub industry, completely different than the newspaper industry. This is, you could take stuff of depth, some footage that they're sitting on from 20 years ago and trade that for something current. It, it, it's barterable material. This is, this is not what you think people think it is. It's not same thing with the daily mail. Don't forget, you know, Helena Hutchins before she was killed by Alec Baldwin, she was the one writing the anti-Russian articles for the daily mail. Yeah. She was the one who wrote article after article after the collapse of the Soviet Union. And she would have been doing that today if she was didn't become a cinematographer and wasn't killed by Alec Baldwin. That was her job. If you open the Daily Mail today or any day, you'll see 40 anti-Russian articles, 30 to 40 every single day. By the way, I've got a tease on that because um, I, I just want to point out Alec Baldwin video. Gavin happened to watch it. Mm -hmm. He saw a couple things. He's doing up a video that we'll be putting okay. out on, yeah, I mean, on I, some I, findings in the interview that seemed a little bit odd to him. I, hopefully, we will be able to cover the trial like these law oh, nice. guys are. We've paid our dues. Oh, you them. mean the civil trial? Which trial? Yes, we're going to yeah. try to cover it like those guys are doing it. You know what I mean? And, and nobody knows more about it than me and Hunley at this point, unfortunately. You know, not that I need this information, <laughs> but unfortunately, this is the world we've stumbled well, into. But speaking I mean, of films, speaking of films, I remember telling you about how the January 6th documentary footage was going to end up in the hand of in the hands of Hollywood, Robert. And there's a company called Saboteur Films that is releasing mm -hmm. a documentary on January 6th, you know, trying to bury them. And they've gotten somehow tons and tons of security camera footage. And that really? company is run by Sebastian Younger, who's a deep state operative, uh, novelist, mountain climber. Yeah, I was did... going to say, I know that dude. Yeah, I know you know that dude. He did Coringal. He did Restrepo. He did The War in Syria. All deep state documentaries, bro. 
And now he's going to do January 6th. He's tied in with a with a group called uh, Goldcrest Films, uh, MI6 related out of England. Just so you know the background of these cats. You know, speaking of like interesting and recent events, you know, the, the some of the backstory of both the, is it Uvalde? There was that Texas school? City? Oh, yeah. Uvalde, yeah. In yeah. Buffalo, I have attributes of like MK Ultra components to them. In right. Well, when the dust settles, I think we'll look into that after the, you know, the, the, the dust settles sure. a little bit. Also that, now this is probably not related, but we've got two shootings that involved really oddly slow police response times. Yeah. Really odd, slow police. I mean, I used to have a sign of a, you know, an operation and it's actually my first ever hush hush. It was about January 6th. Right. And I went through like unusual security lapses. Yep. Uh, you know, unusual investigative lapses. There's like a lit litany of them and some of them are showing like, like in the Texas case, you got a guy who, you know, he has he he appears to have access to weapons and cars and vehicles and and other methods of def self defense that he had in terms of uh, bulletproof things apparently and some other stuff. He had equipment that his financial situation doesn't explain. Right. Um. So that's category one. Category two is he appears to be with the Buffalo guy on the same Discord that appears to have a bunch of FBI guys on the same Discord. Right. And it's starting to be like, you know, my theory was, what if you took MK Ultra theories of mind control and whatnot and plugged it into an AI? Yeah, I've been uh, saying the same is, thing. Yeah. My theory was QAnon. That's what yep. QAnon really was. Well, there these was are Manchurian no candidates. I think that, that's, what, that's what's being fed through cable news. I believe the program is through the television, through a subliminal program like <laughs> MK Ultra, where if you watch 100 hours in a certain amount of time, it triggers some you know mk ultra type program and and you're in you're in because well there there's some okay i i gotta jump in there's some weird stuff on this like with darren brown or whatever because they, they've done some proving out just to set people at ease because there is a natural inclination to say oh my god am i watching subliminal messages that are going to get to me yeah you're watching subliminal messages all the time most people aren't completely affected or are a complete perfect hypnosis subject, like say Surhan Surhan, they're kind of rare, and right. you have to go but through a lot, a lot of right. people. No, yeah, I, I know, but you've got to go right. through a lot of people to find those specific people. I want to let everybody know that, that so it's not yeah. like oh, oh, all of us are getting our brains oh, washed. No, no. They've yeah. taken the Surhan Surhan stuff to another level. Yeah, you know, absolutely. There's, there's, oh, sure. There's the it, fact it, that yes. you think they stopped when Roberts was talking about the church committee. You no. know, in 1974 is absurd. No, that means that they had it. The that means they had it figured out, and then they moved on. Not, that's to why the next program. Advertising illegal. They made it illegal because it works. They didn't make it illegal because it doesn't work. Mm. Assange is not in jail because he told he's a liar. He's in jail because he told the truth. You know, I mean, the, the same thing with Snowden. He's not in in Moscow because he's you know a liar. He's because he revealed these programs to the American people. Sure. That's when well, you almost here. wonder, is that what Musk is getting at with Twitter? In other words, Twitter is a social media manipulative algorithm. Yes. And he's not just getting to the bots. He's getting that this has been misused and abused. I think they tried to extort Musk behind the scenes. Well, I you, you stumbled into something a couple of weeks ago where you talked about the, the lawsuit of Facebook and their phony advertising reach. And you were talking mm -hmm. about the fact that they claimed, and I've had some other Disney executives confirm this to me privately, that when they took an ad out on Facebook, they claimed it would reach 400,000 uh, viewers and it ended up being 400. I mean, the, the lie was so egregious. And I was trying to explain to Eric last week when I was a magazine publisher, what we had in the magazine business was the ABC audit, the Audit Bureau of Circulation. And that was a pink sheet that came out twice a year where they audited your newsstand and subscriptions. So advertisers would see the actual numbers of every magazine in America. If you weren't an ABC member, you didn't get ads. You didn't get ads. You had to have the ABC pink sheet. And that's what's missing with Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, Robert, allowing them to say our reach is 400,000 viewers. That's absurd. They need to have some sort of an audit system like magazines. I didn't know this. I just until you brought up the lawsuit of Facebook. Well, that's what Elon, that's why Elon was changing the deal. It's right. he's playing, he's playing right. the that's whole thing. It's like, it up. oh, there's only X number. Well, there I wonder users. what his exact goal. I mean, I think part of his goal, I speculated before he even said it publicly, 
right. is that the Biden administration has weaponized the SEC and the Justice Department, I think, against him for a range of reasons. Yes. I think they wanted to extort him into some set of policies he wouldn't it, go along with yes. or something specific. Yes. And because he didn't, uh, he realized they're going to come after him. So he got ahead of the curve by reframing yep. the narrative so that when it became public, they were coming after him. It would look retaliatory for him exposing the, the system. I'll put it this way. If they took him out as the head of Tesla through an SEC scandal and you put in a Jeff Bezos, who would you rather have running the electric car company of the future, Eric? <laughs> right, Robert, right? Oh, yeah, no doubt. And I think he under, he knows where some bodies are buried and he's using his Twitter purchase to not just maybe at some point future point use as a free speech platform, but I think use it to show where some bodies are buried. I think it's well, a, a high-end He's, high he's now become and Daniel. He's, he's now become Daniel full circle. <laughs> so what, he knows that? at least where one body is. That's true. Amber Heard, he should be praising him. He should be thanking God every day that he didn't get stuck with Amber Oh, Heard. absolutely. I mean, he has now become Daniel Ellsberg, a.k.a. the most dangerous man in America, in my estimation, because of his knowledge, his money, his his expertise, the fact that he has a he was in the on the left. Now he's on the right. You know, I mean, that every single thing. They could try to throw these scandals at him, I guess, sexually. But the American people are so done with these things. We're so f- nobody cares that Bruce Wayne, cares about Bruce Wayne fingered scandals. Amber Heard, you know, in a Batman movie or something, you know. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, I, I think a lot of those scandals don't have the same weight they used to have. Uh, there's, only, with- there's only one that does, and because the new gay is pedophilia. Oh yeah, yeah. That's the one that sticks. The new gay. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> the, <laughs> there goes his home in the woods. There goes his oh, home in the island. God. The, the, oh, God. Right. Well, this whatever. is what I deal with, saying. everybody. What, what's the code I mean. word? We were supposed to say Epstein Island or something? Or uh, I don't know what it, we're it, to... it just, it's it's free form Friday, Hunley. What are oh, we supposed God. to talk about? It's free form. Remember to subscribe. <laughs> alert, alert, alert. <laughs> Hunley's going to be in YouTube prison. We can visit him. Oh, God. He's going to be in the D.C. jail. He's going to be like, why aren't people seeing our channel? I don't know, Mark. I what no are you idea. saying? <laughs> All I can say is about these shootings is to quote a guy who said the worse, the better. And that was Nikolai Lenin, who said the worse, comma, the better. And I think that what you're seeing from this cacophony of chaos that's being spread across the country right now, the bombings and blowing up of the food plants, the shutting down of, ba- you know, a, a baby formula, the mass shootings, the worse, the better. The gas prices, the everything, everything is leading mm-hmm. to this Klaus Schwab uh, world. And not ironically, as somebody pointed out yesterday, he's a German. <laughs> you know, I, ne- I never I never put that what? together. His father, I think, was a Nazi. Okay, well, so was Schwarzenegger. Is that yeah. you know? Now he grew up in Switzerland. The, yeah, can you imagine Schwarzenegger being the guy to tell the Russians? Like that was one of the worst presentations ever. Ever. You're sitting there and you're saying, "Okay, yes, my father invaded Moscow, and yes, my father was aligned with the Nazis, but there's no bad Nazis now." We're and here's a I father. Like here's a photo of my father in an SS uniform who looks exactly like me. I'm so proud of him. You know, almost exactly, as proud exactly. as, as Mel Gibson's father, who I call Hootin' Tootin' Gibson down in Australia, the world's leading Holocaust denier. Do you want to hear about the Jews from Mel Gibson? Probably not. Yeah, well, I, I, I've met Mel Gibson's dad. He was a fan of a legal work of a case I had. And let's just say he doesn't hide those views. Oh, no, they're quite public, my friend. And <laughs> Bill, his son not... refuses. He, he can't denounce the views because he right. loves his father. You know, his dad. He loves his dad. So his dad, if his dad killed 150 million people, he still love him. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 <laughs> pops is pops. Right. <laughs> I hate my mother's gut. She wouldn't let me sign up for Little League. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, everybody who's wanting to know about the, the law two controversy or whatever, I will talk about it tomorrow on a live stream for local supporters exclusively answer any question anybody has. It's going to be for supporters. I'm not going to go completely into detail. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more than I, I would like to necessarily on YouTube, but I don't like going at it. And I, I'm a tiny channel or a tiny set of channels. All right, Hunley, can we get back I don't to need the to show. swing at the uh, big thing. I don't know. You gave me a silence. I just, I just want to ask Robert about General Walker. He came on to well, talk yeah, about well, General Well, that's Walker. the transition. Manchurian candidate. Right. Like all these things are Manchurian candidate going sideways. And I didn't used to think that with a lot of the school shootings right. and mass shootings, which, which people would raise in the what you could call a conspiracy community, so on and so forth. Right. But these last two have been too weird. Uh, right. You know, on FBI list, 
uh, lapses of security, politicized targeting, politica- well, politicized we narration. We talked about the Las Vegas shooter, board. Robert. They show up with weird weapons so right. that they shouldn't have financially, legally, et cetera. But right. if you were going to tell a story, the missing character from the Kennedy assassination, it would be that general that you brought up. Right. Which and and I like I like the cinematic version of you know you would tell the first like heroic war story version of his of which there are multiple movies but you could use different ones as an example, then you do Manchurian Candidate which radicalizes him, um, even though there it, there's already probably part of him that's conflicted, uh, in the sense that he's this closeted character that he's he's suppression that he it, a, lot, a lot of his biography reads like the Nazis diaries like I came right. across this book years ago called Red Nurses White Nurses somebody studied. It's these two massive books. Uh, somebody studied the diaries of World War I German soldiers to see if they could, by looking at their diaries, mm. predict which ones would become Nazis and which ones would not. Interesting. And it turned out you could by their well, approach you, towards Natalie. women. Um, so their approach the, towards women is what you Towards saying? women. Right. Their oh, attitudes wow. towards, and really what you get down to is you find that the, a lot of these people are emasculated, eviscerated people whose fathers have kind of crushed them psychologically and emotionally. And they've built up this armor around themselves wow. to feel powerful and important. They otherwise feel impotent. It gives them potency. And they have unusual, a lot of Madonna whore complex constructs with women. Wow. And so white nurse is good. Red nurse is bad. And that, that's hence the title that if you knew how they described women uh, relating to this underlying psychosis, you could predict which ones would become Nazis and which ones would not. But Mm -hmm. in the same sense, so you have that guy that's already fits that profile. He fits a classic Manchurian candidate kind of target by the original book and film, right? which Frank Sinatra always felt bad because he thought it had something to do with Kennedy's assassination, his participation in that film. But the you do Manchurian candidate, MK Ultra spun out of people uh, in part. It's been exaggerated because MK Ultra really started in Operation Bluebird and the rest in Germany with them recruiting Mm. Nazis, but it accelerated by seeing what happened with soldiers taken during the Korean war, believing they'd been successfully brainwashed. Right. And then MK, it goes from operation bluebird to operation. Uh, uh, I think it's bluebird. It's one of those names. They got like a hundred names for these things. Uh, translates into, uh, MK ultra. Well, bluebird is, becomes an MK ultra. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Which is what Manchurian candidate is all about. Right. Um, you know, Ted Kaczynski, the most famous well, MK ultra. It, it, interstitially, it leads to William Bryan, who is the hypnosis psychiatrist, who deals with Sirhan, who deprograms the Korean prisoners of war, who writes the book, The Chosen, about jury selection, how to read people's body language, Robert, uh, yeah. then works with F. Lee Bailey. He works with all these guys, uh, helping them in that book right there. Yeah, I yes. mean, that's that's Brian, who had an office a quarter of a mile away, hypnotizing people right in his office. And it really started with the uh, the, the recruitment efforts and the Nazis, yeah, uh, the ex Nazis, and yep. then that expanded into what the Japanese were doing. Then, when they saw success with the Koreans, they really wanted to escalate it, though they may have misinterpreted the success of the Koreans. And then, uh, uh, and then Manchurian Candidate, the book, the movie, Just comes out to. of that. Uh, Hold and- on, Hungley's having a yard sale down here. What's this now? Estabrook, also. Oh yeah, Estabrook ah. too. Yeah, was a, was a primary scientist. Well, what's fascinating is how much all these guys love to write. Like people forget what's his name. Uh, I'm blanking on the name. Uh, yeah, E. Howard Hunt. You know, Hunt's had a book. How about how about um, uh, you know, The Night Watchman by David Atlee Phillips, who was the CIA uh, uh, station chief in Mexico City, who framed Oswald uh, being in Mexico City, trying to get a, a visa to Cuba. He and one of the masterminds of the Kennedy assassination. For you people at home who've never heard of David Atlee Phillips, his brother wrote a film called Thunder Road with Robert Mitchum. Sidebar uh, story there, but. Phillips wrote a book called Night Watch. Hunt wrote a novel, and Roberts talked about Le Care and these others. They're all writers. You know, I was watching a film last night called Three Days of the Condor, and what does Robert Redford do? He reads books. He's reading novels to find out the secrets in the novels of different countries. He's yeah. reading the E. Howard Hunt of Turkey. He's well, Day of the Jackal. Day- Carlos the Jackal was named after Day of the Jackal, the book. They found the book. Exactly. They right. So there's yeah, a yeah. whole genre of these that Robert keeps referring to if you want to know how the deep state oh, works. You had a bunch of British publishers that were just MI6 fronts. So it's all the they were MI6. The ones here. And the same with the ones here. One, oh, yeah, absolutely. Including several of the key ones that in, in, initiated the very idea of contemporary Ukrainian nationalism. Well, if you look like, at uh, uh, Marina Oswald, she's taken under the wing mm-hmm. by Patricia McMillan, who is the CIA 
a writer of biographies. Later, she wrote the uh, or the biography of uh, Khrushchev's daughter. She's the CIA go-to, and they sew up these rights, like you were referring to, with a phony company, a movie company in Italy that disappears a year later, and now nobody can get the rights because Patricia McMillan sews up the rights to a book with Marina Oswald that'll come out years later. That's part of how they used to do it more than today. It involves documentaries. That's the current fare, is doing it, uh, uh, the Alex Gibneys of the world who are paid to do hatchet jobs on Julian Assange. They're paid to do this. They're paid filming assassins who will make hatchet documentaries for the money. And then there's trying books for trying books. books. Right. We, we talked about, <clears throat> but that's kind of old school. You know, the book thing is kind of dried up for the intelligence agencies. It's more documentaries or uh, big films or that, Wikipedia. Yeah. Wikipedia. Absolutely. Mm. Wikipedia. You well, know, I mean, like I said, I, I mean, I wrote a film called the recruit and I ended up in federal court and it turned out they were writing it in Langley. They were re rewriting my script in Langley. I was getting notes back. I go, what the hell's going on here? And I had to go to federal court on that film. So no, I mean, it's fascinating how they transform that film too. The, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it's that it's, was not it, my original script. Let me put it that way. Yeah, right. Exactly. There, there's a lot of other interesting activities that go down there near mm -hmm. uh, near Eric's neck of the woods. The uh, uh, how far are you from some of those places? So yeah, Camp Fury is um, right up the road. Right up the road. Hunley Man, goes well, right Williamsburg. Right after the show, Hunley goes over there. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, I, I had to live within a um, commute distance by law. Well, yeah, I mean, well but, everybody was back to Viva. Well, first time I asked David onto the show, he called me ahead to see if I was CIA. You know what? Really? He might be neurotic, <laughs> but he's not freaking crazy, that Viva. I'll tell you that much. He may be a neurotic Jew, but he's not a nut. Well, you're here, neurotic Jew. <laughs> not like Viva's level, I'll tell you that much. That's so funny. Oh, yeah, he's the, calling uh, me. So how is he going to escape? Is he escaping? Is there like an underground railroad in Canada? I don't know. Maybe someday. Who knows? I, mean, I, I think he was yeah. on Ruben Report this morning talking about. Uh, I think his parents have a second house in Florida, oh, okay. and he right. may be getting a at least a Florida home. What he does with it is yet to be determined. I, I think. love the three. Mark is that? No, it's Charlie Parker. Actually, it's Charlie Parker. Oh yeah, Charlie <laughs> Parker, John, great John. jazz man. Yeah. The, uh, uh, but the the general really fits that because if you were to, to tell a story, you'd tell the you know the the, hmm, the conflicted nineteen forties nineteen fifties American story with the closeted right. gay and all behavior and all that, and then you you flow that into the hero story, then you flow that into Manchurian Candidate, then you flow that into Seven Days in May, uh, and then well and he's, then he's Bert Lancaster, you're right, you know yes. you're a weak sister, Mister President. I could walk out this door right now. The American then you people. flow that into Dr. Strangelove. Then he becomes General Ripper. Right, he becomes Jack Ripper. Yep. But and maybe it, they did that to him, Robert, to take him out after the Kennedy assassination. Maybe he had to be dealt with in a weird well, way. Or Stanley Kubrick knew the backstory and just told it in his own way. Hey, hold on, this is important, guys. Okay. Steve True, his first ever Super Chat. Okay. And is patriotic. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I appreciate it. And now and somebody, back to the show. Oh, hold no, on, somebody else had another question. Okay, give me a break, okay. Mark. Um, <laughs> we are here to show, learn, grift, okay? I'm right, trying to be an okay. honorary member of the tribe. Another the, one. Um, is your room uh, available in, for locals in the future, or have you thought of that? Just mull it over. The recruit script? Yeah. I could put it up there. I don't care. Okay. I'll put it up on locals. Now back to the show. Now back to the show. <laughs> but I mean, I, no, I, I put, put other scripts General's up a there. perfect Enough. combo hybrid. It is shocking that he's missing as 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 like you know it's obvious the mob will be there cia will be there but it's LBJ not obvious that's the that's the distraction robert yeah. it's not that's the that's the grift they want you to look at the mob they want you to look at that crap they don't want you to look at general edwin walker who had means motive opportunity and money who with hl hunt flees dallas for 2 months to hunt's mexican hideaway the day after the assassination who had access to Hunt's money, who ran for governor against uh, John Connolly, who hated LBJ, who hated the Kennedys for not only having him uh, his, his general commission taken away, but put in a straitjacket by Robert Kennedy and taken to a mental institution in Missouri. You want to talk about motive? No, no. man has the motive that General Walker has. No man. And everything that he was doing, well, and he, that he has uh, certain means, but that he has a personal vendetta against the Kennedys because uh, they remove him from his position of power right. when he's trying to build a rogue unit in the military. 
or he thinks it's an uber American unit against right. what's going to happen. It's a Bur- like John doctor- Birch unit is what it is really. Yeah. It's the Dr. Strangelove uh, uh, character basically. Right. He had and- access to those Davy Crockett's that I was pointing out to Eric, the tactical nukes that if they were coming through the Valley with Soviet tanks, he was going to use but- those tactical nukes. The thing that tied it in for me was the closeted gay side. So that was Achilles. Achilles yeah, yeah, because it's it's the it says something about somebody. It's different than being openly gay. It's not necessarily it's not being critical of people that are openly gay or gay lifestyle, you know, right. do whatever. It, it's but closeted gay in the 1950s and 1960s with right wingers. That's a very interesting subculture. And well, it's a take subculture. a look at how many there are, Robert. I mean, J. Edgar you, Hoover. Uh, you no, know, but I'm saying w- w- within the, the the milieu of the Kennedy assassination, Clay Shaw, David Ferry, everybody around LBJ, everyone around loved. LBJ. I mean, this is a well, they're a perfect place. The, the one there, they're used to being subversive. Their whole they're they're subversive in their chosen lifestyle, right? Against what they believe is the appropriate lifestyle. They right. themselves think their behavior is wrong. They're able to be secretive without any problem whatsoever. Who they're, could keep a secret better than them? Exactly. I mean, that's uh, they're connected. Whole... They're networked yeah. because of their behavior to people in positions of power all over the globe. Um, so they already live a conspiratorial life. Absolutely. So performing a conspiracy is easy. Right. And they're the kind of conflicted personalities who would do this kind of thing. And, and if they step out of line, there's already a hammer over oh, their right. head. That's the Achilles exactly. heel. The new Achilles yeah. heel is what I said before. That Achilles heel is now gone. They've yeah, now and, and that's you have the Lincoln Project. It's the, the reason Lincoln why Project. Epstein exists, right? Yeah. <clears throat> because Epstein's there to make sure certain people behave and that they already have everybody's on their own little blackmail list. Right. And then that ties it into Jager. Now, the other thing that I didn't know until you mentioned it was I was always curious who changed the route. I didn't no, realize that, the Dallas mayor had the, it was the mayor, there. Earl Cabell. Now Earl Cabell is the, it, he changes the route. His brother, of course, is fired by JFK, the second in command of the CIA, General Cabell. He changes the route himself. And on his, on, on his deathbed, it's revealed that for 35 years he worked for the Central Intelligence Agency. And what's the likelihood that this General Walker happened to have a Lee Harvey Oswald story at all? You know what I mean? And not Jack only Ruby. a Lee Harvey Oswald story. He played story. bridge with Jack Ruby, dude. <laughs> yeah. not, not only, he has Jack Ruby coming over and playing poker twice a month. I, I mean, and with the mayor, the- with the police chief. The police chief's coming over, Captain Fritz. I mean, this is not a secret cabal. No. What's I mean, a secret cabal is critical. the diversion of attention towards the mob and Oswald. That's the cabal. This mm-hmm. thing is easily solvable. This is not murder, she wrote. It's a pretty easy case. Yeah. He's with Alpha way, 66. He's being infiltrated by Oswald, who's going to these speeches you know, by him. The so-called Oswald shooting of him is revealed by Walker to a Nazi newspaper in Munich. The day of the assassination, he well, calls them on the phone and says, in April, the assassin shot at me. Well, the Munich paper run by all ex-Nazis, the publishers an ex-Nazi in Munich, the editors are ex-Nazis. They run the story that Walker was shot at by Lee Harvey Oswald in April of the same year. Well, the, the other thing is, nobody could ever rat anybody out of, in this sub-community either. It's right. so like, where did you hear this? Oh, at a gay party with this one's uh, for you, Hoover? Barnes. Closeted gay. I'm shocked there's talk of Nick when the FBI see I brought up. That one I don't know. <laughs> that one that's just that's for Barnes. He'll know. Okay. <laughs> it's a so Nick Fuentes is the Jew hater who likes to chase around boys in cat outfits, who's got a lot of weird who's got rat tattooed on his forehead. But he's and got been, oh, oh wow. So he's he, well, he would be a perfect candidate if it was would, 1960s. He would fit within that 1960s. You could see him. I mean, I could see Fuentes coming a mile away because he fits that historical character. All right. Don't forget, by the way, the last you know, guy. Duke's the same thing. The last guy depicted in Hollywood films of General Walker, and there's a long line of them. The last one is Brad Pitt in in uh, the recent Tarantino film. Uh, uh, you know, showing the uh, not the recent one, but the Glorious Bastard. Glorious Bastard. One yeah. before that, where he plays the the lieutenant who is the southerner that's general walker that comes from the devil's brigade which is what inglorious bastards is a remake of right right okay, by the way folks, Brad I'm, he I'm says putting, he says nazis he says nazis I, i'm putting both um episodes in the description for everybody who wants to check it out we did two full episodes on general walker that we're referencing right well, and the, the, for the, all the, the stuff documentary idea, about. the documentary idea is alive and well, Robert. And 
we're going to try to bring you in as some sort of executive producer on this thing because Thomas Jane, my film partner, who was supposed to play General Walker in the Oliver Stone miniseries, is going to use his production company and try to get the money together to do the doc. He completely agrees with with you and me on the value of the documentary on Walker. It's so, fascinating. I mean, it's it's the biggest missing for all the JFK stuff I've heard over the years. This is the aspect that's missing. I mean, even from Oliver Stone's film, he has you know someone kind of being a character like him, yeah. directing thing, but not not filled in. He he. I'll tell you that. why. I'll tell you what. There's two things that Oliver and I disagree with. One is uh, the involvement of LBJ and to General Walker. We fought We fought over this. And the reason people are opposed to Walker is it ends all speculation. It takes right. the drama out of it. If you're trying to make a film and you want to make a film that Walker's the killer, knock yourself out. But if you're not going to make that film, what do you do? You leave it out. You leave it out. Right. And this is not a criticism of Oliver. I mean, what he's doing is he's in, in JFK, he takes like 10 theories and meshes them together with multiple film stocks. He's taking everything together and showing the different types of, of theories that are out there. So, I mean, if you take the Walker one and the story. The other thing I'm curious about is why the Kennedys got rid of him. Because got like rid the, of Walker? Yeah, because like the original official public story didn't sound persuasive enough to me. It seemed like there would be something else that was not being publicly disclosed. Okay, well, it's a two-pronged attack. One is he's converting the military men, indoctrinating them with his blue program, which is anti-red, anti-communist program, which is a far right uh, program that violates the Hatch Act, which is on paper legitimate. He is doing that. He admits it. There's no doubt about it. He's having um, indoctrination. But, but it's not even that crazy. What Walker explained was they have to know who they're fighting. They have to be, a lot of the men had no idea who the Soviets were, why they were in Germany, what they were doing there, what the Cold War is about. And he was willing to stick his neck out and say, this is how you should vote, anti-communist straight down the line. The second part is the Dr. Strangelove threat of, of the, the Davy Crockett nuclear weapons that were under his command in Augsburg, Germany in 1961. Wow. That's the second part. The first right. part was the right wing. Second part- I presume didn't say a lot about the second part publicly at the time. They didn't want to reveal. Absolutely. They didn't want to reveal that the Davy Crockett's were in Germany, uh, just like uh, were in Japan at uh, Atsugi uh, Air Base, where Oswald was. In those caves were nuclear weapons. They didn't want to reveal that when Oswald was there either. But the fact that the Davy Crockett nuclear weapons and Eric and I showed a picture of the door of the room that kept the Davy Crockett's in there. He had access to the Davy Crockett's and that was intentional. That was intentional. They just got spooked because he was so right wing that they were afraid he was going to go and do a rogue thing like uh, Jack Ripper, General Jack Ripper. But and he would have been a seven days in May kind of guy by his. Behavior. Absolutely. In fact, he tries it. He runs for governor. Yes. There's there's attempts to I mean, he becomes H.L. Hunt's boy. H.L. Hunt uh, backs him. He wants to take down LBJ. So who comes out of Texas? It could have been Walker. It ends up being LBJ. And what does LBJ give them? The Vietnam War. And who does he give it to? Bell Helicopter. And who works at Bell Helicopter? There's the, the Davy Crockett, one of them. That's one so of the They call those things Davy Crockett's. And those are right, because it's an Alamo weapons. concept, Robert, that you're using it in the Alamo. Oh. Get it? They're coming with Soviet tanks. You're outnumbered 100 to 1. Walker's group was designed to die and to hold off the Soviets. Here's the room, NBC room. There it is. That's in Augsburg, Germany. That's the ba that's the room that has the Davy Crockett's in it. That's what they're afraid of. Wow. Yeah, no, duh. Right, <laughs> right. Shoot them till they glow, then shoot them in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could see why the Kennedys got a little nervous. Yeah. Well, I mean, they just got wake up call after wake up call. What I didn't know until Oliver Stone's most recent documentary was that Lumumba was part of this. Oh, yeah. He covers Lumumba a lot. I mean, he covers Lumumba in the first documentary and Lumumba is thrown under the bus. And uh, the same as the D the same as the DM brothers, Robert. I mean, he. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was the other interesting thing was I just uh, that it was a wake up sign to the Kennedys of how bad the problem was. That right. And, and don't forget, Dag Hammasud is, is killed in a plane crash, the head of the United Nations. And that was another one. But the Lumumba thing was, the, I think, the straw that broke right. Kennedy's back. They, they, oh, here's they the took Walker thing. Ron Look, Brown style before they took out Ron Brown that way. 
This is the, the, the National Guard unit that was sent by Robert Kennedy, the Attorney General of the United States, to arrest at Bayonet Point two-star General Edwin Walker, a former two-star at that point. Do you have the FOIA file on him? I don't have a FOIA file, but I, I'm going to get it when I we get it. I wonder if there's been a big FOIA file, because you'd think he was supposed to have at least been on strict watch. Right. I have an FBI file. I don't have the FOIA file. We're going to try to get into that when we do the documentary, when we raise some How money. How much to... did the FBI have on him during this time frame? Oh, oh, it's extensive. It's absolutely extensive. Yeah, this is him in Germany. This is um, uh, Walker, the two-star Walker. Um, not, And he deserved those, those stars, right, Eric? I mean, based on what you've learned from the Devil's Brigade, I mean, this no, guy is a hero. That, that he that's is legitimate, legitimate, legitimate war hero. He's almost hero a Smedley Butler. Who's got these secret conflicts right. that goes nuts after seeing what happens in Korea or be, starts to go nuts and then translates it to civil rights and the Kennedys. Well, okay, just to back up, he's sent by by Eisenhower. Yeah, to de, uh, desegregate Little Rock. The Little Rock, and he does it, but with, and he's not he happy. Had some about legitimate it. legal complaints whether the yes. army should have been there. Absolutely, or not. absolutely. But the Fourteenth that... Amendment is still the Fourteenth Amendment for a reason. He's right? absolutely um, uh, eloquent about talking about that to the media. But when it comes to Oxford, Mississippi, to James Meredith, he's already a private citizen, and that's when he goes down there. And the Kennedy administration says that he starts the riot that ends up with eleven killed, and it's a, it is a shit show down there at Oxford, but. They literally arrest him in that photo, a bayonet point, and they take him to a federal institution in Missouri where he's given the multi, uh, the Minnesota multiphasic personality test with 500 questions. That was the same test given to Sirhan Sirhan. Now, when he gets caught in the bathroom, when is that? Is it late 60s, 70s. early 70s? No, it's in the 70s. Middle 70s. Yeah. 70s, middle 70s. It's way and after the. Was that he was out of the picture. He, he was not nowhere near so the So that wasn't like time. a setup or anything. He had no, no, no. He did it a number of times, as a matter of fact. It wasn't a setup. It, it, they told him, stop coming in the bathroom. It was a park by his house. And there were complaints uh, about a guy, you know, whatever he was doing in there. He doing liked, it. He well, I mean, George Michael young men. talked about it. Right. Those guys clearly look gay. Okay. Well, these were his men. Uh, Definitely the Long two on the right. The two on the right just scream gay. These guys had a conspiracy. Um, and it, it completely collapsed. They were involved in Dallas with him. These were his men. These are the guys he brought back from Germany. They started a group called Conservative USA, not unlike uh, what's his name's group today, uh, Alternative. What's it called? Uh, uh, turning Point. Turning Point, yeah. They, they were the first example of Turning Point. And they were true blue conservatives, you know, Bercher level conservatives. And they were Walker's men, and they wanted to work with Walker. They're the ones that used the HL Hunt money to buy the ads and billboards saying JFK is a traitor, uh, arrest warrant for JFK. That was all paid for and put together by these guys with HL Hunt's money. Hmm. And I think they were involved in the conspiracy, to be honest with you. But I think the actual shooters were, um, and that's Reverend Billy James Hargis who became a, a travel companion for Walker the year before they went on the circuit together. It was a religious right-wing combo between Walker and this Christian group uh, with uh, uh, Hargis. They were, to, they were like the tent revival circuit. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and they, they raised a lot of money. And oh, I'm sure. Yeah, Hargis. They're would considered the founders of the modern conservative movement. That's right. That is correct. Really it is correct. And this thing had to be covered up, Robert, because different elements did not want this story out there. And that's elements on the left and the right. Elements yeah, on that's the left. True about Woody Harrelson's dad. Yeah, we, yeah. Woody, I I mean, Woody he said he was channeling his dad. I've always thought the man on the grid, the, I thought the most persuasive argument I saw, other than a military sniper like you're describing, would be uh, that that French assassin was one of the people on the. Oh, the jackal. Road. The day of the jackal you're talking about? It's. Uh, it's oh, the, I know. You're oh, right, right, yeah. right. The French connected to the heroin trade in Marseille. It yes, yes. mm, like mm, goes yes. all the way back. Maybe it was Corsican. Yes. The, I mean, I mean, we it, used the I Corsicans don't... a lot during World War II to destabilize the French communist effort and French unions. Right. Uh, I mean, the Corsicans still have an influence over the Marseille mob. I mean, that, Absolutely. That, that still exists. In fact, JFK was uh, involved in letting de Gaulle know about various plots yes. against him. Correct. And a lot of that was connected to the Corsican uh, Marseille mob. Right. And because well, they, we had CIA had used them for a while and they just didn't trust De Gaulle. And it yeah, was think, Kennedy who told him that 
you know, he tipped off. He told the French ambassador that he didn't control the CIA and it was a problem. That's where this comes up. And that's where this yeah. comes up. Unsold sexy spy story, bond, homosexual. Well, that's Untold not America's. Sexy spy that's not an American story. story, so we can't go. True, there. but right. we are. It's not dealing with gay, but we are eventually going to do honey pots. Well, oh, the honey yeah. pots will be like honey pots here, and, and oh yeah, 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 yeah. Involved yeah. Americans. That's what Marina Oswald was at a, in Minsk. She had come out of St. Petersburg. Robert. Is that what she is? Because I her story. Oh no, also no, she was legitimate. Really she, well. she had been involved in the embassy in St. Petersburg. With, I think the German ambassador or somebody else, and they had a mover to, to Moscow, and then later hooked, hooked her up with him. Did we ever get the Russian files after the cold, you know, the collapse of the Cold War on Oswald and everything connected to both her and him? Yes. Ah. Yes, we have. And it turns so out they, that, they spotted him for what he was, I presume, right? But both sides spotted them for what they were. They were both, in other words, it's like that show, The Americans, right? They're both agents. You know, one from one side, one from the other. They each understood their relationship to each other. He was catching her mailing shit back to Russia. She was mailing back like Scientific American magazine and doing like ground intel. What people don't understand was human intel was all we had back then. When Oswald was in Minsk, he went around and recorded the bus routes, how the phone works, how you buy crap at the hardware store. He was on the ground trying to list, which he did in his diaries, all the machinery of how a city worked. That was human intelligence. Marina did the same thing in Dallas and Fort Worth. And that's why she's compromised. She can't go to bat for him because of the problems. That's right. This is really important to know, by the way, because I've had Jack Barsky on, who was a KGB mole. And he talked about because they don't know what is going on here that well. When he was dropped here in the 70s, they dropped him in the blackest area of Chicago. Right. And he was literally going, oh, my God, what am I doing? You know, you know, in fear for his life because he did not understand how the cities worked or anything else. He had to actually right. learn. That, that happened uh, in the 50s. That's why the CIA plan involved 13 agents, Americans, dropped behind the Iron Curtain. It was Angleton's plan. They were trained at Langley. They were trained at the farm. Before they left, they were at the precursor to the farm. They would drop behind the Iron Curtain. They were all ex-military, all quote-unquote defectors. They were all designed for human intelligence in Bulgaria, Romania, and Oswald ended up being assigned Moscow. The, uh, the Moscow sends them to Minsk to minimize the exposure and the damage to Moscow. So he's sent to Minsk. But the job was the same as Eric just described. His job was to compile human intelligence, how shit worked. There were no satellites. He had to offer up the fact that he knew stuff to trade with them, whether that was the the elevation of the spy plane, the U-2 spy plane with Gary Powers. Well, we may never know, but he had to offer up something to let the Soviets know that he was legit. But the point I was getting to was the honeypot, uh, the honey trap was the fact that on their side, the women married the guys who were over there and went back to the U.S., got involved in Amber Heard situations, got smacked around, sued for divorce as quickly as possible, and then were free to roam the United States and gather intelligence. Angleton said on this program, this uh, uh, 13-member program, nobody's getting divorced from these women any longer. If you bring back a woman, you're not going to divorce her. I don't care what happens. We're not. We'll deport them first. We'll deport them or use them, but they're not going to be set free to roam the United States like they have previously. Interesting. So Marina yeah. Oswald was the original The Americans. That's right. That's where they got it. In fact, Spielberg read my thing, and he wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole because The Americans was about to come out when the producer told me the, of the show. And he said he liked, he liked it a lot, but it's very dangerous. That was the word he used, dangerous. You know. And then yeah, the, he always stays very oh, middle yeah. Americana, oh, middle yeah. narrative. I wonder why. Well, I wonder why. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but it, anyway, yeah. So it, yes, Marina this, Oswald, this may um this this may be an individual featured in our upcoming uh program, honey traps. Oh, honey cocaine trap, yeah. yeah, they all seem to have Asian wives now, from Zuckerberg to Mitch. They all, you know, all of them, uh, Les Moonves, all yeah. of them. I mean, what are the odds? Rupert of Rupert Murdoch. Rupert Murdoch. What are the odds of that, Robert? There's so yeah, many different is, women in the United States. Uh, our, our Senator um, Eric, what's his nose out of California? Swalwell. Who Congressman had, uh, Swalwell. Fang Fang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had Fang Fang. This is a honey trap. Fang Bang program. the Fang Fang. This is the old school Soviet honey trap. That's all it is. You know, mm. I mean, 
it's been, it's as old as uh, the Roman times. You know, love you long year. time doesn't mean the same thing. That's right. That's right. I mean, the fact that she was able to escape back to China when only one man knew about the FBI investigation, and that was Swalwell. I mean, it's kind of amazing to this day. Wow, that is fascinating. All right. Well, yeah, the, 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 the Marina story by herself, which we're going to do an episode just on Marina Oswald, because there's so much there. You know, no the fact doubt. that she, she testifies before the Warren Commission, she says exactly what they want her to say. And there's well, even if there's any files left that are secret, I'm hoping Putin uses it as a weapon to uh, respond to everything. Just start well, de declassifying everything else the Ruskies have. About well, the I'll tell you what we have that's secret that we're not released, which is a handful of files uh, at this point because of the JFK Records Act from Oliver Stone's film. What's left is just the stuff on Mexico City. And the mm -hmm. reason Mexico City is so important is because it's a fraud. He never went to Mexico City. J. Edgar Hoover said to, to LBJ, that's an impersonator of Oswald. The day of the assassination, the audio tapes are fake. The FBI and the CIA were at, at larger heads about this. This tape has been destroyed uh, of Hoover and LBJ, but the transcript still exists, you know, it, uh, uh, on, on, on various websites. And you can read how Hoover tells LBJ that the situation in Mexico City is fraudulent. And he's not down there. And in there is the frame that cracks the assassination wide open because they say that he's down there in September of 1963 when he's not. And that is from David Attlee Phillips, who was embittered because Phillips trained the Bay of Pigs soldiers who were slaughtered on the beach. And he never forgave Kennedy for that, Robert. Mm. Many of All roads lead to Mexico City, my friend. And that's why those are the last files left at the bottom of the barrel. And By the way, I dropped a link to the uh, transcript for anybody who wants to know. It's on unstructured.locals.com. The LBJ transcript you're talking about. Uh, LBJ, J. Edgar Hoover transcript. Right. Oh, yeah, we, we what have, down. right. Yeah. Well, we put it on Locals. Hey? Right, yeah, yeah. And you can, read, you can read it. And in there lies the Achilles heel of the assassination conspiracy. Because if Oswald's not in Mexico City, and they say he was in September 21st, in 1963, that means they're framing him. And if they're framing him in September with a phony photo and a phony phone call, that says they're, they're, they're the ones running the show, Robert. And yep. David Atlee Phillips is the mastermind from Mexico City, who is the head of Mexico City, you know, the, the, the Western uh, station chief. Makes sense. All right. Well, now this is where the part everybody gets to hate me. What happens We've now? Got we got to wrap up. I think Barnes is going to be going on the Viva tonight. I heard oh, a, okay. a, a little something. birdie. Right. And um, I definitely don't want to cut into their time because I want him to continue coming back on Free Point Fridays. Right. And I've asked throughout the show. I'm getting better. Please subscribe. If you want to see this kind of thing and try to keep up, make sure you subscribe. You'll want to watch each episode of these probably three times. Rewind, take notes, watch it again. I put links to both the Walker episodes. We've done a lot of stuff. He was talking about Marina Oswald. We've done Ruth Payne, and there's a lot of Marina Oswald in the Marina uh, Ruth Payne episode because of their relationship. So, ton of Kennedy yeah, don't stuff. Don't forget Michael Payne works at Bell Helicopter, who is run by a Nazi that ends up selling a million helicopters for the Vietnam War, Robert. Hmm. All right, and thank you, Dove Omega. Uh, if and also there is more out there. Yeah, everybody boo Hunley. Okay, here you go. Boo. <laughs> That's my role. Boo. Um, bad parent Hunley. Bad. Bad. Oh, Hunley. God. If you want to buy merch, merch is below. What? Yes. We have shirts. We have camper cups. We have all kinds of good I stuff. I like when Hunley becomes the used, the used car salesman. This is my favorite part of the show. Oh, right. I know. I know. I know. Tell us about that subscribe button, Mark. Oh, yeah. Look, I don't know how it works, but Hunley says there's a button you push to subscribe. Lord knows nobody does it, but it's out there somewhere. It's a nuclear option or something. Or, or as Hillary Clinton said, the reset button. Right, Robert? Yes. You had to push the great reset button. You could subscribe and then somehow if YouTube finds out about us, we're dead. So maybe you shouldn't subscribe. Yep. And again, if you want to know what's going on with LawTube, Legal Bites, the whole controversy, what I know of it, I will be talking about tomorrow on a real stream i call it on locals unstructured.locals.com that one is behind the paywall for supporters but 
I, I will go into there's no law against them, uh, PayPaling me, is there, Eric? Well, after they PayPal me, I guess you can have some change. <laughs> there's, no, there's no federal law yet under the Biden administration. Well, right? and if you can't do PayPal, you can do Venmo since PayPal owns them both. They own them both anyway. What difference yeah, does it make? Well, I don't care. It's cash. Pay, paymo or something. <laughs> paymo. So, yes, um, you can always um, Venmo, PayPal, Mark. Mark has a book. Link is in the description as oh, well. Oh, yeah, you can buy the book. But I just want to point out something else. This day may be the end of the Me Too movement, Robert, with the Johnny Depp trial. This may be yep. the end, the final yep. official legal end, because nobody, if he wins this case, which you believe he will, no one is going to want to go through this again. And I think this should have been done two years ago. If some celebrity had the gonads to do what Depp did, this might the, have ended. The, the proof will be Marilyn Manson. Exactly. It, uh, exactly. That, that I, will, right. you know, it's like right. if, if Depp wins this. Right. My, all eyes really I'm saying look this at may Marilyn be the Manson. official end of the Me Too movement. And what, what Alex was saying on the Duran was England is still living in that, Robert. I mean, the, the, the reason she was victorious was because, as Alex said, there wouldn't be a judge left in London who, who, who went uh, for Johnny Depp because it still has power there. Yep. Kind I mean, of interesting, my friend. Kind and that judge is personally connected to her. through spend. Anyway, right. on that note, everybody, what happens until now? next time. Well, we're gonna have. We'll be back Tuesday. I believe we're gonna be talking about Baldwin. Oh, um, a little bit of body language is tied with it. Yeah, he's a gift who keeps on talking. Well, we'll cover and, the trial. Maybe that'll be the ultimate gift. Whatever trial pops up. Okay. Well, uh, when, whenever it pops up. Right. We if could be the pops up. and you could be legal bites. You could be the legal bite lady. Oh, <laughs> you sweetheart. Uh. <laughs>